Hey everybody, this was going to be a quick tutorial on how to capture 3DS footage on your computer and TV and thus a review of the Katsukiri 3DS capture unit I bought. But this video, let's say, has evolved from its original intent, but I'll save that for the end. First of all, I'm a huge fan of the 3DS, but because of its closed infrastructure, I've never been able to capture a video for it. I looked online for years, ever since I started this channel in 2011, but it was always either cumbersome or expensive. Then at the end of last year, I discovered this company, Katsukiri, that modded 3DS units in Japan. You could either send in your current 3DS, any model, and they would simply mod it by putting in a capture card and then drilling a hole from it to a USB port. You can see the port right here. Or you could just buy a new 3DS unit from their catalog. I opted for the latter during their Christmas sale and one month later I got my sweet new, new 3DS XL. So I meant to do this review slash tutorial slightly after I got it at the end of January, but things kept getting in the way and I kind of wanted to test it out anyway for at least a month, so I guess this delay worked out for the better. So let's go over how this exactly works. You simply plug in any micro USB cable into the new port and plug the other part into your computer. Then you launch the included program, New 3DS View, on your computer which is essentially an app to display your 3DS screens. That works well enough, but I went a step further bought an HDMI dongle for my laptop that plugs into the lightning port and voila you can see your computer screen on your TV which allowed me to use my actual capture box. Okay so how do the games run? Well if you're hoping for true HD you're not going to get it. You're essentially blowing up a 240p resolution to somewhere in the range of 800p depending on if you use both screens or not which I should mention you can adjust at your leisure along with several other settings. Let's demonstrate that point with a look at Super Mario 3D Land with the frame rate display turned on. I found that with most games, if I played with both screens on display, the top screen would dip in frames and sort of chug around. Now let's switch all movement to the top screen and boom, a clean 60 frames per second. Look how great that looks, even blown up. Now if you want to capture both screens, you can limit the frames to always display at 30 and it runs a lot better. Of course the operation varies depending on what you're playing. A puzzle game like Professor Layton that doesn't use intense motions displays fine with both screens even without that filter. Most games usually just use the upper screen anyway, so capturing the bottom will do you just fine unless you really want to display those maps, items, or whatever. Here's the weird thing though with that. If I did want to capture the bottom screen, and just the bottom, it usually froze after I switched. The app reboots just fine and quickly too, but it has, you know, hiccups. Another finicky thing is sound. At default the sound is turned off, but you can turn it on a beta filter that will essentially capture sound as well, but it is off anywhere from 1 to 3 seconds. For my videos, I remove sound altogether and use free music for my background noise while I narrate, just like I'm doing right now. I usually don't make long play videos, so this quirk doesn't matter to me. Again though, if you want to stream with this or make let's plays with the audio, well, I thought you should know. Oh, and two quick points. Yes, it can be used to capture DS games, and no, it does not capture 3D. Now for the foreshadowed bad news. Katsukiri, the website I bought the 3DS from, went bankrupt on February 2nd, which was about a week after I got my unit. I basically wrote the script for this video, then went to the site to try and capture some footage and found that it was not working. And then I found some news articles. I really couldn't believe it. I went almost two months without even knowing this. It's incredibly sad that this review is basically null and void if you want to go to the site and get a 3DS for yourself. However, as of the posting of this video, there is another site, Murky, which is their, or I guess was, their European distributor, and they still have some stock left. So yeah, it basically changed the content of this video. If you are curious, I was going to give, or I guess still am, the Katsukiri 3DS and the app in 8 out of 10. Overall, even with the sound stuff, the freezing and the frame drops, I love this thing. It does the job and it does it moderately well with those few caveats. Again, the way I make videos, it's better than okay. So be on the lookout for some 3DS coverage, which is weird to say since the system is all but dead, what with the Switch hotness blowing up. That just means I have a huge back catalog I can go back to, like adding video to my older reviews back from Examiner. My first one will launch this week covering, you guessed it, Super Mario 3D Land. What better way to kick off my coverage than with the game I bought my first 3DS for back in 2011. Funnily enough, the same month I started this YouTube channel. It's all coming full circle.
If you like this video and want to see more from me, then subscribe to my channel and also check out my articles over at The Gamer. All these links and more are in the description notes below. Thanks for watching!